So last time we derived Wien's law, and what we found was that the wavelength of light corresponding to the peak of the Planck distribution was equal to some constant divided by the temperature. And that constant we found was equal to 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3 meters Kelvin. Uh, and just a quick units check, we see that uh, we want something with meters on the left. And on the right hand side we have meters times temperature divided by temperature. So the units work out. So we know we know we know this answer makes sense. Okay. Uh, so what what do we actually learn from this thing? We derived it, what's the usefulness of it? Well, one thing is well, one thing to just appreciate is its simplicity. This is very nice. It's just uh, the the wavelength is inversely proportional to the temperature. That's good. Um and the, and the other thing, and we can just do a quick sanity check here, is that as we increase the temperature, as you increase this temperature, the wavelength decreases. And so what that means is that as you get hotter, your wavelength, your wavelength becomes shorter, which means that your energy increases. And so that itself also makes perfect sense. So, okay, maybe that's actually not too surprising. You probably could have told me that uh, before we actually did all that math to calculate it. Um, so what what really can we learn from this? Well, what I want to do is look at two examples, and the two most important examples, in my opinion. And the first is the sun. Um, the sun's a, 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 an approximate black body. So what can we learn? We'll learn about the sun from this. Well, I'll, I'll use uh, I'll use orange for the sun. Um, the, the, the peak wavelength emitted by the sun is going to be B over, well, the temperature of the sun. So what, what, what is the temperature of the sun? This is a good number to know. Uh, it's about 6,000 Kelvin. 6,000 Kelvin. And so this whole thing simplifies. If you, if, you, if, you, you know, if you divide the two numbers, you get 480 nanometers. And this right here should blow your mind because 480 nanometers is exactly the wavelength of blue light and so what do we learn from this we learn that the the peak uh, wavelength that the sun emits the, the wavelength that the sun mostly emits is blue light which is also exactly right in the range of light that we're able to see with our eyes and so right there we learn something interesting about biology we learn that our eyes are adapted just right so that way we're able to see the light from the sun, um, which which in retrospect makes perfect sense, right? I mean, we're we're gonna it makes sense for us to be able to see whatever's uh, most prevalent around us, and so light from the sun is, I mean, is the most logical thing for us to see, and so for the fact that, uh, so the fact that this turned out to be exactly blue, makes perfect sense, and so that's pretty interesting. That's pretty cool. Um, what's another example? Well. And I'll, I'll use another, I'll use another color for this, uh, blue, I guess, um, the CMB. So, so what, what's the CMB? The CMB is some, some radiation bath. It, well, it's, it's, it's the cosmic microwave background. It's some radiation bath emitted, um, as far back in the universe as we can see. And what's special about the CMB is that it is the most perfect black body in nature. Uh, it's the it's the it's the best black body we've ever we uh, we physicists have ever observed, and so people often say, and you may often hear it claim that the temperature of space is two point seven degrees Kelvin, and when people say that that's the temperature of space, really what they're saying is that that is the temperature of the CMB, which which is pervasive everywhere in space, and so you might ask, well, okay. Well, um, the temperature of space is 2.7, really the CMB's temperature is 2.7 Kelvin. What is the corresponding wavelength? And if you put in 2.7 here, uh, we, we, I mean, we can almost do the math by, by hand, right? Uh, we have 2.9, which is roughly 2.7 divided by 2.7. Uh, so this whole thing comes out to be about 10 to the minus 3 meters which is also exactly in the microwave region, which makes sense. That's where the CMB gets its name. It's, it's the cosmic microwave background because 
the, the peak wavelength of light is in the micro microwave region. Uh, so I think I'm going to stop here. Uh, th these are just a couple of examples where uh, knowing almost nothing about an object, just just its temperature, you're able to learn something pretty interesting, which can actually have some some profound effects effects on real life. Like, you know, why why do we see blue? Well, the sun mostly emits blue light. You know, well, why is the microwave background called the microwave background? Well, <laughs> because it's emitting microwaves. Uh, so yeah, so I'll, I'll stop here and uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.